Lisa asks, Hi, Raf. Uh, wondering if possible to address in the next AMA sacroiliac joint sprain and associated lumbar facet dysfunction and how to work with a client who has this or early stages or late stages of healing and how long it typically, typically takes. Uh, very specific because this is what I had been told by a physio I had on the left side back in October 2019. Went away completely with Pilates after two months and now I occasionally still experience that same painful twinge on the left if I do hip flexor leg lifts or bend down with straight legs too quickly moving to the right with my hands. Um, I'd love to know more about this topic so I can help my future clients heal better. Is leg lift seated maybe the exercise with people sh above should avoid or reduce range of motion? Is there an exercise that's better suited to assist with the healing and avoiding that pain from occurring there again? Any other info on the topic would be greatly appreciated as it's tricky to find the right info online and I would love to learn how to work with that specific injury. Any good articles you're aware of that you can share? Thanks in advance. Really appreciate the AMAs. Uh, well, Thank you, Lisa. So, Lisa, I had a dig um, on uh, through Google Scholar for this, um, and now what I've found is really an an absence of evidence. So, I can't really draw any firm conclusions, but uh, you know, multiple searches for terms around uh, sacroiliac joint sprain returned nothing. So, um, I believe that there this is my suspicion is that this is a spurious diagnosis like it's a kind of a made-up condition um so a, i'm not saying that your pain is made up i'm not saying that your symptoms are made up i'm saying that the diagnosis you've been given is quite possibly not a uh, established medical diagnosis um uh, so a sprain is when you uh, strain, you know, stretch or slightly tear a ligament and ligaments join bone to bone. And so your sacroiliac joint is the joint between your sacrum and your ilium. The ilium is the, pel the half of your pelvis and the sac sacrum is the wedge of bone in, in between the two iliac bones. And the sacroiliac joint is a joint between those two. Now the sacroiliac joint is what is is defined as an extremely stable joint. Let's see if I can uh, come up with a picture of it. Um, here's one. All right, so on the right of your screen here, you see there's a sacroiliac, there's, there's the sacrum here, there's the ilium on the right, and you can see all these gray things, they're the ligaments. Like the, this joint is wound around with ligaments literally from top to bottom they're very very thick strong ligaments so um, this is a, a highly stable joint here's another one looking at the ligaments on the front you can see all the like it's a very very stable joint it, it only has like literally um, there are a few radio stereometric studies I found where they implant radio opaque markers into people, like basically stick lead pins into their bones <laughs> and then have them move under a fluoroscopic x-ray. And they find that the sacroiliac joint moves usually less than half of one degree. Um, so this is when someone like stands on their one leg and lifts up their knee like that. The sacroiliac joint typically moves less than half a degree. So it's a very, very stable joint. Um, so it just it seems to me somewhat implausible that that would be sprained you know the ligament damaged on it because it's just such a strong joint and to apply enough force to that to sprain it you would just think that you'd probably break an arm or a leg or a rib or something you know you'd have to get so much leverage onto it to move it to 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 harm it that it just doesn't, it's not that plausible to me. And combined with the fact that I literally couldn't find anything on Google Scholar, not one study um, relating to sacroiliac joint sprain. Um, however, uh, and also, but what I did find was a few, were a few studies um, on, you know, methods of diagnosis of sacroiliac joint related pain. And basically what um, they found was, let me have a look and see if I can dig out this one that I am thinking of. So J. Mm. 
Yeah, this is the one. So this is a systematic review in two parts of clinical tests of a sacroiliac joint from the year 2000. Um, and basically what they did is they looked at a whole bunch of tests of the sacroiliac joint that, you know, physiotherapists, osteopaths, chiropractors, etc., do to try and figure out, you know, and diagnose sacroiliac joint pain, you know, what's causing it. And what they found was the conclusion of this methodological review is that there is no evidence to support the inclusion of mobility and pain provocation tests for the SIJ or sacroiliac joint in clinical practice. Um, Three major problems have been identified in validating SIJ dysfunction tests. First, poor reliability of SIJ dysfunction tests exists, which what that means is basically different when different uh, physiotherapists, if you get 10 physiotherapists to all perform the same test on the same person, you'll get widely varying results. You know, some of them will say, yes, it's definitely this, and others say, no, it's definitely not that. Um, and so the same test on the same person with different practitioners give different results. So that says it's l not reliable. Um, and uh, da -da 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 -da. finally, there is a need for the proper use of a gold standard um, in assessing the validity of SIJ tests. So in other words, even if we had a test where you know multiple practitioners did the same test and agreed that it's the same result, we don't know if that actually measures some if that's actually measuring anything of value inside the SI joint. All we're saying, all that says is, okay, ten physiotherapists agreed that this test causes pain or this test shows mobility of the sacroiliac joint. Does that indicate there's a problem? Well, we don't have a gold standard test. So normally, like when we're evaluating a test, we might evaluate it against a gold standard of MRI or you know, sur exploratory surgery or biopsy or something like that. We say, okay, then we compare it, you know, does this test give the same result as an MRI or a CT scan? Well, it turns out that MRIs and CTs are also very um, unreliable and not able to detect these things very uh, um yeah, reliably. So um, we don't even know, we don't even have a standard against which to measure these tests. And what's more, different practitioners tend to get different results with them. So I would take that diagnosis with a grain of salt. But if it is a sprain, a sprain is a you know minor strain or minor tear, means the same thing, to a ligament. Uh, you know, like if you sprained your ankle, you know, that's a slight strain to the ligaments on the outside of your ankle usually. Um, and we know that the healing time for a ligament is roughly 12 months. Um, and so you said you did this in October 2019. We're now in July 2020. So um, you said it went away almost completely in a couple of months, but you occasionally get a twinge. Um, well, the, if, if that was a sprain, you know, you had a minor tear in some part, some part of that ligamentous system well i would that sounds about normal to me you know that sounds that sounds about right like if you sprain your ankle you'd expect it to be super painful for a little bit but after a couple of months it probably wouldn't hurt but maybe if you went running and played basketball every now and then you get a twinge for the first year or so because it's still healing right so um, if it was a sprain, I think you're doing the right thing. And what I would do under that situation would be continue to gradually increase the load on it. So I certainly wouldn't be avoiding movements. Um, I would be working to the edge of pain and maybe a little bit into pain. Um, and uh, because you to promote healing, you want to stress the tissues. You know, you need to apply load, which stimulates the collagen fibers to lay down. So when you heal something... Um, when you heal a ligament, you know, you have a ligament here and it's got some, you know, a bone at each end and then it's got some kind of tear in it, okay, a little minor tear there. Well, what happens is you lay down, you know, when you heal, you lay down new collagen fibers and you just kind of lay them down every which way in there just to kind of fill in the gaps. And what happens over time is as you load that ligament, okay, as you load it and pull on it, it, that load itself stimulates those fibers to realign, okay? So they realign along the lines of tension that is applied to the ligament, okay? And also it stimulates them to grow thicker. So loading is an integral 
part of the healing process. Like if you don't load it, it's not going to heal properly. Uh, and the best time to load it is in what's called the remodeling phase, which is sounds like you're in it now, if that was a sprain. So uh, because if you leave it to sit for too long without loading it, it kind of sets, right, with all the fibers going to, in a disorganized fashion. So you're best to load it um, within pain tolerance if it is a sprain. I suspect it's probably not a sprain, though, because I don't think it's that's a real diagnosis. Um, and so the other alternative would be that you've got just essentially you're sensitized to that position, okay, in which case the exercise recommendation is the same, which is gradually progress load within pain tolerance. Like don't avoid pain, work up to pain, push into pain a little, but don't go overboard so you can't walk for three days. Just, you know, push into it a little bit, edge up into it, and then edge up a little further, edge up a little further, but push it. You know, you should find that your pain tolerance will increase. You know, your your pain threshold will increase. You you It will be less painful to do the same things. Um, but that'll be a gradual thing over time. If it is a sprain, bear in mind that the healing time is measured in months or up to a year and a half. Um, and if it's not a sprain and it's just a, a pain sensitization thing, that's, the time frame is variable, but think in terms of months or a year or two. Don't think in terms of oh, three weeks of strengthening and we'll fix it. Um, so that's my advice. Um, I wouldn't. There's nothing I would avoid. I would just uh, be guided by symptoms, but not avoid the symptoms. Just the symptoms should be, you think about pushing the envelope gently and the envelope should expand. So you should think about eventually you want to have nothing off limits. Everything's, everything's good. Hope that helps.